lesson, Anne, Steve, and I are all going to talk about graphing parabolas. I'm going to focus on the axis of symmetry and the vertex. So let's look at some graphs of parabolas. I want to start with the quadratic equation y equals x squared minus 4. You might recognize this as the quadratic equation that I graphed in the last lesson. I'm going to look at completing the table a little bit differently this time. I want you to take a look at the equation. In our equation, we have y equals x squared minus 4. Now, it doesn't matter, for instance, if I put negative 5 or positive 5 in for x. When I square either of those numbers, I'm going to get 25. And subtracting 4 from 25 gives me the same result either way. So in my table, I have numbers such as negative 3 and positive 3, negative 2 and positive 2. So I'm going to compute the y values for both of these pairs of numbers at the same time. So let's start with x equals negative 3 or x equals positive 3. So if x equals plus or minus 3, then y is going to be 3 squared, because it doesn't matter whether we square negative 3 or positive 3, we're going to get the same result, minus 4. That's 9 minus 4, which is 5. So whether x is positive 3 or negative 3, y is 5. What about if x is negative 2 or positive 2? Whether we square negative 2 or positive 2, we get 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. So it doesn't matter if x is negative 2 or positive 2, y is going to be 0. What if x is negative 1 or if x is positive 1? When we square either of these numbers, we get positive 1. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So whether x is negative 1 or positive 1, y is going to be negative 3. Finally, if x is 0, 0 squared minus 4 is negative 4. So y is going to be negative 4. And as I observed in the last lesson, we see that the y values start at 5, decrease to negative 4, and increase to positive 5. Even though the x values are increasing by 1 each time, our y values are decreasing and then increasing at different rates. A decrease of 5, a decrease of 3, then a decrease of 1, then an increase of 1, an increase of 3, and finally, an increase of 5. Let's take a look at the graph. So starting with the seven points that we found, and then connecting these points with a curve, remember this curve is called a parabola. There's a couple other things I want to point out about this graph. The point 0, negative 4 is called the vertex. And the line x equals 0, which happens to be the y-axis, is called the axis of symmetry. Well, what do we mean by the axis of symmetry? Let's look at some pairs of points. We already saw some symmetry when we were creating our table. For instance, if we focus on the points negative 3, 5 and positive 3, 5, well, starting at our axis of symmetry, one of the points is 3 units to the right of the axis of symmetry, and the other point is 3 units to the left of the axis of symmetry, both with the same y value. What about when x is negative 2 or positive 2? Well, the y value both times is 0. One of these points is 2 units to the right of the axis of symmetry. The other is 2 units to the left of the axis of symmetry with the same y value. Finally, what about when x is negative 1 or positive 1? Well, one of these points is 1 unit to the right of the axis of symmetry. The other is 1 unit to the left of the axis of symmetry, both with the same y value. Well, let's complete another table. Let's complete the table for the quadratic equation y equals x squared minus 6x. Let's take a look at our equation. Again, when I substitute something like x equals negative 5 or x equals positive 5, when I square either of those numbers, I'm going to get the same result, 25. But in this quadratic equation, I'm subtracting 6 times x. And it does make a difference whether I subtract 6 times negative 5 or if I subtract 6 times positive 5. So I'm going to have to do these computations separately. So let's start with x equals negative 3. If x equals negative 3, then y is going to be the square of negative 3 minus 6 times negative 3. That's 9 plus 18, which is 27. 
What if x is negative 2? Well, if x is negative 2, then y is going to be the square of negative 2 minus 6 times negative 2. That's 4 plus 12, which is 16. Let's see if we can do some of these in our heads now. What if x is negative 1? Well, then y is going to be the square of negative 1, which is positive 1. So we have 1 minus 6 times negative 1. Minus 6 times negative 1 means we're going to be adding 6. 1 plus 6 is 7. So when x is negative 1, y is 7. What about when x is 0? Well, this one's a little bit easier. Then we have y equals 0 squared minus 6 times 0. That's 0 minus 0, which is 0. What about it when x is positive 1? Well, y is going to be 1 squared minus 6 times 1. That's 1 minus 6, which is negative 5. What about when x is positive 2? Then y is going to be 2 squared minus 6 times 2. That's 4 minus 12, which is negative 8. And what about when x is 3? Then y is 3 squared minus 6 times 3. That's 9 minus 18, which is negative 9. So let's plot the seven points that we just found. And let's connect these with a smooth curve. Well, hopefully you're looking at this graph and some thoughts are going through your mind. One of the thoughts that I'm thinking about right now is, where's the vertex of this parabola? Another kind of important thought is, where's the symmetry that we just talked about? Well, let's go back to our graph of y equals x squared minus 4. On this graph, we had two horizontal intercepts at negative 2, 0 and positive 2, 0. And we observed with our axis of symmetry that the axis of symmetry lies midway between the x-intercepts. That is, the x-intercepts were two units to the right and two units to the left of the axis of symmetry. The vertex lies right on the axis of symmetry. So let's go back to y equals x squared minus 6x. What are the x-intercepts for this graph? Well, to find the x-intercepts, we need to let y equal 0. So if y equals 0, then we have 0 equals x squared minus 6x. So that's 0 equals x times the quantity x minus 6, factoring out the common factor of x. Using the zero product property, either x has to equal 0 or x has to equal 6. So there are two horizontal intercepts. The horizontal intercepts are 0, 0, and 6, 0. Now remember, the axis of symmetry lies midway between the x-intercepts, and the vertex lies right on the axis of symmetry. The x-intercepts for the parabola y equals x squared minus 6x, we just found to be 0, 0, and 6, 0. Well, look at our table. I see the x-intercept 0, 0. I don't see the x-intercept 6, 0. It looks like we're looking at the wrong part of the table. So let's focus on the table between these x-intercepts of 0, 0, and 6, 0. So now let's plot the five points that are shown in the table. Thinking about our axis of symmetry, our axis of symmetry needs to be midway between the x-intercepts. So our x-intercepts are at 0, 0, and 6, 0. So what's going to be halfway between these x-intercepts? Well, that's going to occur when x is 3, halfway between 0 and 6. So our axis of symmetry is x equals 3. The vertex lies on the axis of symmetry, so our vertex is this point here, and that's the point 3, negative 9 in our table. Well, notice that our table has a couple of blanks. What's happening when x is 4, and what's happening when x is 5? Well, let's think about these individually. I know that when x is 2, y is negative 8, so I have the point 2, negative 8. This point is one unit to the left of the axis of symmetry. So I need to have another point, one unit, to the right 
of the axis of symmetry. This would be the point for negative 8. So y must be negative 8 when x is 4. Let's verify with a formula. When x is 4, y is 4 squared minus 6 times 4. That's 16 minus 24. That really is negative 8. So the point for negative 8 checks in the formula. What about when x is 5? Well, I've got another point on the graph here, 1, negative 5. This point lies 2 units to the left of the axis of symmetry. So I should have another point, 2 units to the right of the axis of symmetry, with the same y value, negative 5. So this would be the point 5, negative 5. So when x is 5, y should be negative 5. Let's also verify this one in the formula. If x is 5, then y is 5 squared minus 6 times 5. That's 25 minus 30, which is indeed negative 5. So this checks. So what does the graph of this parabola look like? It looks like I've got seven points on this parabola. I think before I connect these with a curve, I want to find out when x is 7, whether I'm going to have a point that actually shows up on my grid or is somewhere above my grid. So let's see what happens when x is 7. Well, if x is 7, then y is going to be 7 squared minus 6 times 7. That's 49 minus 42, which is 7. That point's going to be on the grid. So let's plot that point. Well, that means I must have a symmetric point to the left of the axis of symmetry. This point is 1, 2, 3, 4 units to the right of the axis of symmetry. So I should have another point 4 units to the left of the axis of symmetry with a y value of 7. So the point negative 1, 7 should also be on this parabola. So now let's sketch the parabola. And now I'm going to erase the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry isn't actually part of the parabola. The solution set for this quadratic equation in two variables is the set of all ordered pairs that satisfies the equation y equals x squared minus 6x. The only point on the axis of symmetry that satisfies this equation is the vertex. The vertex is already a point on the parabola. The axis of symmetry just helps us in graphing the parabola. An axis, or line of symmetry, is a line across which the graph can be folded so that the points on one side of the graph match with points on the other side of the graph. So if we had a graph of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, remember that the axis of symmetry runs through the middle of the parabola and cuts through the vertex. If we actually had our parabola on a piece of paper, we could locate our axis of symmetry, fold the paper in half, and the points on one side of the parabola would line up with the points on the other side of the parabola. You can try this at home. The highest or lowest point on a parabola, remember, is called the vertex of the parabola. In this parabola, open it upwards, the lowest point on the parabola is the vertex. In this parabola opening downwards, the highest point on the parabola is the vertex. The axis of symmetry of the graph of the quadratic equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c has equation x equals h, where h is the horizontal coordinate of the vertex. So our axis of symmetry has equation x equals h. Any equation of a vertical line is x equals some constant. And h here happens to be the horizontal coordinate of the vertex. So the vertex is the ordered pair h, comma, y sub 1. y sub 1 is one particular y value. Let's graph y equals x squared minus 9. What are the horizontal intercepts of the parabola? Well, remember, to find the horizontal intercepts, I need to let y equal 0. So if y equals 0, then 0 equals x squared minus 9. X squared minus 9 is a difference of square, so I can factor that as the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x minus 3. The zero product property tells me that x either has to be negative 3 or x has to be positive 3. So the horizontal intercepts are negative 3, 0, 
and 3, 0. Let's plot those two points. What's the axis of symmetry? Well, remember the axis of symmetry has to lie midway between the horizontal intercepts. So our horizontal intercepts are at negative 3, 0 and positive 3, 0. Along the x-axis, what's halfway between negative 3 and positive 3? Well, that would be 0. 0 is 3 units away from positive 3 and 3 units away from negative 3. So our axis of symmetry should be the vertical line x equals 0. And the vertical line x equals 0 happens to be the y-axis. Let's plot our axis of symmetry. What's the vertex of the parabola, then? Well, remember that the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry. So we know what the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be. That's 0. We can use our equation to find the y-coordinate. So if x equals 0, then what is y equal? Well, y is x squared, so 0 squared minus 9, which is negative 9. So the vertex is 0, negative 9. Let's plot that point. Let's find some more points on this parabola so that we can actually get a good representation when we connect the points with a curve. So we've got three points already, our horizontal intercepts and our vertex. Let's find out what happens when x is negative 2, for instance. If x is negative 2, y is the square of negative 2 minus 9. That's 4 minus 9, which is negative 5. So the point negative 2, negative 5, is a point on our parabola. This point happens to be two units to the left of our axis of symmetry. So we need to have a point two units to the right of our axis of symmetry with the same y value. That would be the point 2, negative 5. So 2, negative 5 should also be a point on our parabola. And we can check that in the equation. y equals 2 squared minus 9, that's 4 minus 9, which is indeed negative 5. What if x is negative 1? Well, then y is going to be the square of negative 1 minus 9. That's 1 minus 9, which is negative 8. So the point negative 1, negative 8, should be on this parabola. This point is one unit to the left of the axis of symmetry, so there should be another point one unit to the right of the axis of symmetry with the same y value. This is the point 1, negative 8. So the point 1, negative 8 should also be on my parabola. Well, before I sketch in this parabola, it would be nice to know what happens, for instance, when x is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so on, and in particular when the graph goes off of the grid that I have on the screen. So let's see what happens when x is 4. Well, if x is 4, then y is going to be 4 squared, that's 16, minus 9. So when x is 4, y is 7. So I have the point 4, 7. This point lies 4 units to the right of the axis of symmetry, so there should be another point 4 units to the left of the axis of symmetry with the same y value. This is the point negative 4, 7. What about if x is 5? Well, then y is going to be 5 squared minus 9. That's 25 minus 9, which is 16. My y-axis only goes up to 9, so that's going to be off the grid. So I have enough points here to get an accurate sketch of this parabola. So connecting the points, a parabola is going to look something like this. And remember, the axis of symmetry is not part of the graph of the parabola, so I'm going to go ahead and erase the axis of symmetry. Here's a graph of y equals x squared minus 9. Let's find the horizontal intercepts, axis of symmetry, and vertex for the parabola with equation y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. So starting with the horizontal intercepts, I need to let y equal 0. 
So if y equals 0, then 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. I think I can factor that right-hand side as x minus 4 times x minus 2. Negative 4 times negative 2 gives me the constant, positive 8. Negative 4 plus negative 2 gives me negative 6 as my coefficient of x. So the zero product property tells me that either x has to equal 4 or x has to equal 2. So this parabola has two horizontal intercepts. The horizontal intercepts are 4, 0 and 2, 0. Well, we're also asked to find the axis of symmetry. Remember, the axis of symmetry lies midway between the horizontal intercepts. The horizontal intercepts are 4, 0 and 2, 0. So we're thinking about what x value lies halfway between 4 and 2. Well, that would be 3. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 3. The last thing we're asked about is the vertex. Well, the vertex lies right on the axis of symmetry. So I know that the x value of the vertex is 3. I can use my equation to find the y value of the vertex. So if x equals 3, then y equals 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 8. That's 9 minus 18 plus 8, which is negative 1. So the vertex is 3, negative 1. So we found our axis of symmetry and three points on the parabola, the vertex and the horizontal intercepts. Well, let's find out what happens when x is 1. So if x is 1, y is going to be 1 squared, which is 1, minus 6 times 1. So I have 1 minus 6 is negative 5, plus 8 is 3. So the point 1, 3 should be on the parabola. The point 1, 3 lies two units to the left of the axis of symmetry. So there should be another point two units to the right of the axis of symmetry with the same y value of 3. This would be the point 5, 3. Before I sketch the parabola, it would be nice to know what happens when x is 6, 7, 8, and so on. And in particular, when the parabola goes outside of the grid on the screen. So what happens when x is 6? Well, in our formula, y is going to be 6 squared, that's 36, minus 6 times 6, that's 36. 36 minus 36 is 0, plus 8 gives us 8. So when x is 6, y is 8. So the point 6, 8 should be on this grid. The point 6, 8 lies three units to the right of the axis of symmetry. So there should be another point three units to the left of the axis of symmetry with the same y value. That would be the point 0, 8. This is my vertical intercept for this parabola. Well, just to be sure, let's see what happens when x equals 7. Will the parabola go off this grid? Well, when x is 7, then y is 7 squared, that's 49, minus 6 times 7. 49 minus 42 is 7. 7 plus 8 is 15. That's definitely off this grid. So let's go ahead and graph the parabola with the points that we have. So erasing my line of symmetry, the parabola y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8 looks something like this. Now let's find the horizontal intercepts, axis of symmetry, and vertex for the parabola with equation y equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. To find the horizontal intercepts, again, I need to set y to 0. So if y equals 0, then we have 0 equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. I can factor that right-hand side as 
x plus 2 times x plus 2. As 2 times 2 is 4, the constant, and 2 plus 2 is 4, the coefficient on x. So the zero product property tells me that x has to equal negative 2. It looks like this parabola has only one horizontal intercept. The horizontal intercept is negative 2, 0. Well, what about the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry lies midway between the horizontal intercepts. This parabola only has one horizontal intercept. Well, what could that mean? We only have three possibilities for our vertex. The vertex on a quadratic equation, the vertex for the parabola could be above the x-axis, on the x-axis, or below the x-axis. If the vertex were above the x-axis, there would be no horizontal intercepts. If the vertex were below the horizontal axis, there would be two horizontal intercepts. If the vertex is right on the horizontal axis, then there's one horizontal intercept. That's the case here. So our vertex and our horizontal intercept must be the same. If there's only one horizontal intercept, the horizontal intercept must be the vertex. So all that we've found so far is our horizontal intercept and vertex are both the same, negative 2, 0. This means that our axis of symmetry must be x equals negative 2. So let's find some more points so that we can actually graph this parabola. What happens if x is negative 4? Well, looking at our equation, y would be negative 4 squared plus 4 times negative 4 plus 4. When we square negative 4, we get 16. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. 16 plus negative 16 is 0. When we add 4, we get 4. So when x is negative 4, y is positive 4. So we have the point negative 4, positive 4 on our parabola. This point lies two units to the left of our axis of symmetry. So there should be another point two units to the right of our axis of symmetry with the same y value of 4. This is the point 0, 4. This is our vertical intercept. What about if x is negative 3? Well, looking at our equation, y is going to be the square of negative 3 plus 4 times negative 3 plus 4. The square of negative 3 is 9 plus negative 12. 9 plus negative 12 is negative 3 plus 4 gives us 1. So when x is negative 3, y is 1. We have the ordered pair negative 3, 1. This point lies one unit to the left of our axis of symmetry. So there should be another point one unit to the right of our axis of symmetry with the same y value. This is the point negative 1, 1. Now before I sketch this parabola, I want to think about a few more points. What happens, for instance, when x is 1, 2, 3, so on? And when does the parabola go off the grid that I have on the screen? So what happens when x is 1? If x is 1, y is 1 squared plus 4 times 1 plus 4. That's 1 plus 4 plus 4, which is 9. So I have the point 1, 9. This point lies 1, 2, 3 units to the right of the axis of symmetry. So there needs to be another point 3 units to the left of the axis of symmetry with a y-coordinate of 9. This is the point negative 5, 9. And obviously after that, the parabola is going to go off the grid. So let's sketch our parabola with these seven points. So erasing the axis of symmetry, the graph of y equals x squared plus 4x plus 4 looks like this. Now I'm going to turn this over to Steve, who's going to talk some more about graphing parabolas. Hello. In Candace's part of the lesson, she focused on the axis of symmetry and the vertex of the parabola. I'm going to focus on some different aspects of the parabola. I'm going to begin by looking in depth at the horizontal intercepts of a parabola. Then I'm going to talk about some up-down issues. Candace hasn't addressed this at all. 
and then I'm going to revisit the vertex issue and look at it from a slightly different perspective, and then I'm going to briefly talk about putting it all together before turning it over to Anne, where she's going to work several examples where she puts it all together. So let's talk about the horizontal intercepts of a parabola. So here's a question. How can we determine the number of horizontal intercepts of a parabola? Well, let's first consider what all the possibilities are. Basically, if the vertex is below the x-axis and our independent variable is x, our parabola is going to have two horizontal intercepts. When the vertex is on the horizontal axis, our parabola has one horizontal intercept. And when the vertex is above the horizontal axis, our parabola has no horizontal intercepts. Is there something in the formula that we could look at to help us determine how many horizontal intercepts we're going to have? Well, let's go back and review something that we discussed when we were working with quadratic equations in one variable. The discriminant of the quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, is the expression b squared minus 4ac. And we can use the discriminant to determine properties about the solution set for the equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. Let's remember why b squared minus 4ac is important. The reason that expression is important is because it's the radicand of the radical expression in the quadratic formula. So if that expression, b squared minus 4ac, is positive, we are going to get a positive result from the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Consequently, our equation is going to have two solutions, one solution when we add the radical and one solution when we subtract the radical. So when the discriminant is positive, the equation has two real number solutions. When the discriminant is 0, the radical part of our expression in the quadratic formula is 0. It doesn't matter whether you add 0 or subtract 0. In both cases, you have 0 effect on the quantity that you're summing. Consequently, our equation is only going to have one real number solution. Finally, if the discriminant is negative, we have the square root of a negative number in our quadratic formula. There are no real number square roots of negative numbers. Consequently, our solution set has zero real number solutions. Well, what does this all have to do with x-intercepts? Well, let's take our quadratic equation in one variable and let's change it to a quadratic equation in two variables. Solutions to quadratic equations in two variables are ordered pairs. They have an x-coordinate and they have a y-coordinate. The solutions to the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 are the x-coordinates of the horizontal intercepts of the parabola y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Consequently, when the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 has two solutions, the parabola has two x-intercepts. We have similar connections in the next two rows of our table. The graph of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c has two x-intercepts when the discriminant is positive, only one x-intercept when the discriminant is 0, and no x-intercepts when the discriminant is negative. Let's see a couple of examples. How many horizontal intercepts does the parabola y equals t squared minus 20t plus 100 have? Well, on the horizontal intercepts, the y-coordinate is 0. So this is analogous to the question, how many solutions are there to the equation 0 equals t squared minus 20t plus 100? We can answer that by looking at the discriminant. The discriminant of this equation is b squared minus 4ac, so that's the square of negative 20 minus 4 times 1 times 100. That's 400 minus 400, which is 0. When you're working with quadratic equations in one variable, if the discriminant is 0, the equation has exactly one solution. So when the discriminant is 0 and you're working with 
quadratic equations in two variables, what you know is that the parabola has exactly one x-intercept. In this case, our independent variable is t, so our parabola doesn't have any x-intercepts, it has one t-intercept. This parabola has exactly one t-intercept. How many horizontal intercepts does the parabola y equals 4t squared plus 6t plus 7 have? Horizontal intercepts, y is 0. So how many solutions are there to the equation 0 equals 4t squared plus 6t plus 7? Well, the discriminant this time is b squared minus 4ac, that's 6 squared minus 4 times 4 times 7. So this is 36, that's 6 squared, minus 4 times 4 times 7. 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 7 is 112. And when we take away 112 from 36, the result is negative 76. What does this tell us? Well, this is a negative number. Our quadratic equation, 4t squared plus 6t plus 7 equals 0, has no solutions. Consequently, this parabola has no t-intercepts. Again, I'm calling them t-intercepts because our independent variable is t. Let's talk about up-down issues. Let's graph y equals 4 minus x squared. Well, let's begin by filling in a table. When x is 0, y is 4 minus 0, so that's 4. The only occurrence of x in this equation is a squared occurrence of x. It doesn't matter whether I square 1 or negative 1, the result is positive 1. 4 minus 1 is 3, so our parabola has the points 1, 3 and negative 1, 3. When I square either 2 or negative 2, the result is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. Our parabola has the points 2, 0 and negative 2, 0. When I square 3 or negative 3, the result is 9. 4 minus 9 is negative 5. Our parabola has the points 3, negative 5 and negative 3, negative 5. Let's take me out, bring a grid in, and let's plot our parabola. So, we have the point 0, 4. Let's plot that point. I'm going to skip the next row just for a second and go down to the row that talks about our horizontal intercepts. Our horizontal intercepts are the points 2, 0 and negative 2, 0. That means that our axis of symmetry is the line x equals 0, which in turn means that this point 0, 4 must be our vertex. Check it out. Our vertex is above our horizontal intercepts. Something new is happening here we're going to get a parabola where the vertex is on the top rather than being on the bottom, and in all our previous examples, the vertex was on the bottom. Let's go ahead and plot the rest of our points. We have the points 1, 3, and negative 1, 3, and we have the points 3, negative 5, and negative 3, negative 5. Now, before I connect these dots, I do want to consider where does the parabola leave the grid that I'm displaying? Well, when x is 4, what do we get for y? We get 4 minus 4 squared. That's 4 minus 16, which is negative 12. Negative 12 is just a little bit below this grid. Similarly, when x is negative 4, we're going to get a point that's just a little bit below this grid. So when I go ahead and I connect my dots, I get a parabola that resembles this. We say that this parabola opens down. All of the earlier examples, the parabola opened up. So here's a question. What is it that caused that parabola to open down? It has to do with the coefficient on the squared term. Let's discuss the graphical effect of the leading coefficient of equations of form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a doesn't equal 0. 
When I use the phrase leading coefficient, I'm talking about the independent variable side of the equation. I'm talking about the coefficient on x squared. Well, I'm going to investigate this with a, with a very simple form of a quadratic equation in two variables. I'm going to investigate y equals a times x squared, where a is some real number. So I'm going to investigate this using a nifty little graphical program called Wimplot, which is available for free on the internet. What I have right now is the graph of a parabola, and this parabola has been parameterized. And what I mean by that was when I input the formula, I literally asked Wimplot to graph y equals a times x squared. You may or may not be able to read this little box right here. It says across the top, the current A value. And inside this box right here, it says that the current A value is 2. Since I'm graphing y equals ax squared, right now what's being displayed is y equals 2x squared. Let's verify that with a couple of points. When x is 1, y should be 2 times 1 squared, which is 2. 1, 2. The point 1, 2 is on this parabola. When x is 2, y should be 2 times 2 squared. 2 times 4 is 8. 2, 8. 2, 8 is on this parabola. We really are looking at y equals 2x squared. What I can do with this device right here is I can change the value of a. And when I'm changing the value of a, I want you to see what the effect is on the parabola. Like right now, I've just slid the value of a down to 1. What happened to the parabola? It got closer to the x-axis. I'm going to keep making a closer to 0 and look at the parabola. It's getting closer and closer to the x-axis. Eventually, when a gets to 0, the parabola is no longer a parabola. It's just a line. Does that make sense? Well, if a is 0, y is 0 times x squared, it doesn't matter what the value of x is. y equals 0. That's a horizontal line. What happens when a goes negative? Voila! our parabola starts to open downward. So I think we've seen a pattern. When a is positive, the parabola opens upward. When a is negative, the parabola opens downward. When a is 0, we don't have a parabola. We have a line. So what's the graphical effect of the coefficient on the squared term? The parabola opens upward when a is positive. The parabola opens downward when a is negative. There's a little trick that I share when I'm teaching in my calculus class. And the little trick I share is that the parabola is happy when a is positive, and the parabola is sad when a is negative. Here's a new kind of problem. Which picture fits the parabola y equals minus 4x squared minus x plus 3? Well, this might be a little overwhelming when you first look at it. There's six pictures, it's all so confusing. Well, let's sort it out. What were we just talking about? We were talking about the coefficient on the squared term. When the coefficient is positive, the parabola opens upward. When the coefficient is negative, the parabola opens downward. Check it out. The coefficient on the squared term is negative. The parabola opens downward. These three parabolas cannot possibly be the picture that fits our equation. So they can go bye bye well, what's the other thing that's in the picture? The other thing in the picture is the x-axis. So I think what we need to ask ourselves is, how many x-intercepts does this parabola have? And we can answer that by looking at the discriminant. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, so that's the square of negative 1, minus 4 times negative 4 times 3. That's 1 plus 16 times 3 is 48. That's 49. And the important thing about that number is that it's positive. And when the discriminant is positive, the parabola has two, in this case, x intercepts. So we're looking for the downward opening parabola with two x-intercepts. That would be this puppy right here. How about y equals 4x squared minus 12x plus 9? 
Well, this time, the coefficient on the squared term is positive, so we need a parabola that opens upward. How many x-intercepts does this parabola have? Well, this time, b squared minus 4ac is the square of negative 12 minus 4 times 4 times 9. That's 144 minus 144, which is 0, which means that we have only one horizontal intercept. Which picture is a parabola that's opening up with one horizontal intercept? It's that parabola right there. Now I want to talk some more about the vertex. How can we determine the vertex of a parabola? Well, let's go back to our picture that shows the possible locations of a parabola. When the vertex of the parabola lies below the x-axis, Candace shared with you that you could find the x-coordinate of the vertex by locating the midpoint between the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts. Candace also shared with you that when there is only one x-intercept, the x-intercept and the vertex must be the same point. Candace, unfortunately, didn't share with you any way of determining the vertex when the vertex lies above the x-axis. So I'm going to share that with you. And there's some good news about what I'm going to share with you, and that's that what I share with you is a formula that you can use in all three cases. And that formula looks like this. The x-coordinate of the vertex of the parabola with the equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c is x equals the opposite of b over 2a. Now, your textbook probably shows you a derivation of this formula for the picture where you have two x-intercepts on your parabola. In order for you to see that this formula always works, you have to take a subject called calculus. Hopefully, that's in your future one day. If you do take that, then you'll see why this formula works. If you don't take that class, you'll just have to accept it on faith that this formula always works. Make sure that you memorize this formula so that you can access it when you're taking your test on graphing parabolas. Let's find the vertex of a parabola with the equation y equals 2x squared plus 6x minus 7. Well, we just had this formula thrown at us. The x-coordinate of the vertex is x equals the opposite of b over 2a. So for this parabola, that's the opposite of 6 over 2 times 2, which simplifies to negative 3 halves. But remember, we're talking about points in the xy plane. Points in the xy plane have two coordinates an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So we need to figure out the y-coordinate of the vertex. When x equals negative 3 halves, y is 2 times negative 3 halves squared plus 6 times negative 3 halves minus 7. That's 2 times 9 fourths plus 2 goes into 6 3 times. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9 minus 7. 2 over 4, I can factor out 2 over 2, and that leaves behind 9 over 2. And then I have minus 16. Minus 16 is the same as minus 32 over 2. So altogether, the y-coordinate comes out to be negative 23 over 2. Let's state our conclusion. The vertex is the point negative 3 halves, negative 23 over 2. Let's see one more example of this. Let's find the vertex of the parabola with the equation y equals 7t squared plus 9. Well, we have a formula. The x-coordinate of the vertex of the parabola is x equals the opposite of b over 2a. There's a tiny little problem with this formula. That's that our equation doesn't have a variable x. It has an independent variable t. So the real formula we need is that t equals the opposite of b over 2a. So applying that formula to this particular parabola, we have the t coordinate of the vertex 
is T equals opposite B over 2A. Well, what's B? It's the coefficient on the linear term. 7T squared plus 9 has no linear term. But we can think of 7T squared plus 9 as 7T squared plus 0 times T plus 9. And we can see that our linear coefficient is indeed the number 0. So our T coordinate is the opposite of 0 over 2 times 7, which is 0. But remember, the vertex has two coordinates. What's the y coordinate? Well, when t equals 0, y is 7 times 0 squared plus 9, which is 9. The vertex of this parabola is the point 0, 9. Well, let's suppose that we were asked to graph y equals 3x squared plus 6x plus 5. What are some of the things we might want to consider? Well, we could ask ourselves, does the parabola open up or open down? What is the vertex of the parabola? What is the y-intercept of the parabola? What are the x-intercepts of the parabola? What are some other points on the parabola? Something we might consider when answering this question is, what's the axis of symmetry of the parabola? These are a whole lot of questions to ask. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I have a tendency sometimes to go on and on. So I'm going to turn this question over to Anne so that she can show you several examples of putting it all together when working with parabolas.